welcome to another Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Benelli. Now, today's topic is going to be on relighting landscapes. And a little bit later on, we'll have a fashion photographer and lifestyle photographer, Eric Vallon, joining us. And he'll give us some of his suggestions and how he chooses to, to light landscapes. In fact, the, in the opening credit, if you saw the Brooklyn Bridge, that was one of his shots. And he'll come back on and he'll show us how, how he got the shot and how he works on editing those images. Now, before we begin, I just want to uh, take a quick moment to thank our partner, Fujifilm, who reminds us to share images, um, uh, make stories, and to experience the moments at the speed of life with Fujifilm. Thanks for staying at home with us. Hey, let me play a couple things for you. And let's not forget, they have that special ebook still, which is six speed lighting techniques to create better photos. And the bit.ly is right here. And somebody mentioned earlier, I never put that into the description. I'll make sure I put that into the description for everyone. So it's much easier to um, download it. All right. And hey, we have a lot of our friends joining us. Let me come right back again. All right. Let's see who's coming in. Hey, we have Mike again, standing by in Kingston, Ontario. Buddy Russell came in again. Oh, wow, we have people in from Holland and all the way from Connecticut. Hello, Tommy. And Belize again. I wonder what the weather is out there. Hello, Rick. Great, we have a lot of great people coming in here. And um, Eric is running just a little bit behind. He just got done doing a photo shoot. Let's see if that's him now. One moment. Let me pull this up. And let's see if I can grab Eric in one second. Almost. Let's see. <laughs> So, oh, here he is. One second. Hey, Eric, you're in. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, let me um, let me adjust my camera just a little bit. Yep, and then you already turned on the settings that we talked about. Yep, yep, got right. those. Good. So, I'm gonna, um, just for a moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set Eric up, and once I set Eric up, we'll pull him in into the conference. Let's see, let's see how good I am, Eric. If I can do this this quick. Um, <laughs> let's see. Oh my lord, I've never. All right, so let's see where we are. Oh, here he is. Can you see yes. yourself? Hey, how's it going, everyone? That's some, that's some serious lighting. I love that lighting. Thanks. It is, um, should we do a lighting demo? No, not right in a second, but, but you know what? No, okay. do, do, did you already share your screen? Um, I haven't yet. I'm just dragging my the images in question over. All right. Into a new collection here for us to play with today. And everyone, you're able to see Eric, correct? Let me know. Um, hello, Paul from Philly. One hey, Paul. Moment. Sorry. Hey, uh, David here in Florida. And, and actually, you're down here visiting right now, uh, Eric, down in um, Tampa yes. area. Yeah, I'm down in Tampa area right now. Uh, how, yeah. how is our weather today? <laughs> oh, my God. Amazing. Hot. <laughs> so, let's yeah. see. And Rod ahead. from Massachusetts. Up. Good. We're almost there. That's my favorite. All right. Cool. And then as soon as you share your screen, I'll jump on over. All right. Let me just find and out. This which, while you're doing that, you know what I'm going to do, Eric? Eric, you do that. And I'm okay. Gonna, um, I'm going to do I'm going to bust into a real quick demo. Okay. Good. You guys can see him just fine. Did he, Tom, Tommy, did he have some serious... His lighting looked really good. All right, I'll, I'll pick your brain on some of your lighting in a minute. All right, so here we are. Let me share my screen with you. Um, I right, so we're going to take this image, <laughs> and the image was taken by none other than Dima Setnik, which is our CEO and the uh, the co-founder of our company. I'm sorry, he's not the CEO, he's the co-founder of our company, and he's also the guy who's created 
the software, Luminar, that manages absolutely amazing. Um, so here's one of his photos. Let's relight it. Now, when I do this, I'm going to cheat a little bit and start, and I should say cheat. I like to start with some of the Luminar looks, and you just access it from clicking looks. And I'm going to start with the autumn colors. And already, oh, once I get in, oh, one moment. I clicked yeah, out of looks, it. The looks are totally cheating because it's like you click it and you're 90% there. Yeah. <laughs> kind of amazing. So, and so it's funny. What I was doing is I was trying to do yours and mine at the same time. Let, let me click to mine. <laughs> one moment. All right. So as soon as it pulls up, um, well, we, yeah, like you said, like we, we just mentioned, Eric, with the, the looks, it's, a good, it's either a good starting point or you could take it and use it um, you know, from, from there and add on to it. The, the best way to explain it, and I hate to bring out the Italian in me, is think of it like a uh, like spaghetti sauce. You, know, you can go to the store and buy ragu and mm -hmm. you put it in the pot and then you docker it up. You add a bunch yep. of stuff to it to make it your own sauce. Um, mm -hmm. My relatives won't like me saying that, but... Obviously. All right. So if there's no the sweat, blood, and tears in it, is it really home cooked? Like I, some people subscribe to that. Yes. All right. So here we are, before and after. Look at this. Already, it's bringing out the warmth in the scene, and it's lighting up the areas that were hidden. So let's see what the what it actually did. And if you notice on the side, any of these tools that are highlighted, it means that those tools were used to create this recipe. All right. Let's look at the creative tools. Ooh, good. It used a lot. And I used the fall lot. Awesome. Look at the difference before and after. Look at the color grading. So that, that's the whole purpose of using these LUTs. Now let's come up to the top. And always, you know, I love starting with AI Accent. So I'm going to continue with what they did and bump it up just a little bit. AI Structure is so cool because it's human aware. And, and since there's no humans in the picture, it knows where the background is. And it's going to add structure to that background. Boost is going to intensify it. Look at that. And last, we have our color, which they bumped up the saturation just a bit. Whereas saturation enhance all the colors. Vibrancy enhances just the muted of those colors. Let me go back up to the AI enhancer. And I definitely want to increase the, the AI sky. So, oh, I love that. All right, now let me come back down again. So I'm staying inside the Essentials tools. And I, I want to use uh, the Landscape Enhancer. Foliage looks really good. Look, look at the difference. So it brings it out just a touch. But what I do want to look at is this dehaze slider. Ooh, look at that. So I look at dehaze as a way to kind of bring contrast back into the scene. All right? Here we are before and after. Look at that. Now, personally, this tree is kind of my anchor point, so I, I want to make that tree just a little brighter. So from the Pro Tools, I'll click on Dodge and Burn. I'm going to start painting, and I'm going to choose Lighten. 50% is fine for now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the tree just a bit. And... If I make the brush larger, it's going to make it look like the sun or the rays just caught it just right. There we go. And I'll click Erase to remove some of the areas. But instead of 50%, I'm going to dial it way down. This way, it gives me more control of like how much feathering I want to do. There we go. Just enough to where it's believable. There it is. All right. And before and after. It doesn't seem like we did a whole lot, but man, look at that. It jumps right out at you. And again, I would take a little more time uh, coming through here. Again, at a smaller opacity or lower opacity. I would take a little more time and just dab. I'm just, in fact, um, if you guys can see, um, I'm using uh, um, 
the surf the Microsoft Surface, so I could draw on it. And what I want to do is just dab it. I'm just coming in and just lightly dabbing the spots. Now I'll turn it on and off just to see if I'm making a change, and I am. And there it is. All right. So let me do full screen. I'll be with you in just a moment, Eric. Yep. Oh, it's looking good. I want to go back now. Back to there. <laughs> I know. So let's see. Uh, let's get rid of the looks. And here we go. So before. I didn't even get the before and after. <laughs> before and after. Let me get back to it. Here we go. So um, again, this is something that I just absolutely love, love, love. I wish I was the one who took the photograph. You know, it, it was Dima, and I wish I could find out where he did it. But I can see something like that hanging up on one of my walls just coming in because of the relighting of the CC. And I'm sure, Eric, you'll agree to this. This happens quite a bit, is you go out to a scene, you photograph it, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, wait a second. That doesn't look like the scene I remember it to be, right? Yeah. You know, and, and you're wondering what the heck happened, right? Um, mm -hmm. And honestly, it's, it's, I think, the emotion, right? Like if you go to a concert and yeah. you watch your favorite group on the concert, you're, you're flipping out, it's amazing, and then you listen to the live album and you're like, oh, okay. It didn't sound as good like that. So yeah. um, now what do you have for us? You have, it actually, let's, let, me, let me make sure I can share your screen. That was that was the perfect the perfect segue because when I do landscape or cityscape photography, that's exactly what I'm kind of keeping in mind. Like most of the time, the photos we walk away with don't look how we remember them. And the biggest thing of that is a limitation in technology and the camera sensors for the most part. It's it's HDR essentially is what we see with our eyes, right? We see detail in the highlights, the shadows. I mean, if if we're at that scene at that vista. We're seeing in the shadow line down there by the river, and we're also seeing the bright highlights in the skies. Camera can't see all that in a single photo. So what I have for us is some pictures I took of the Brooklyn Bridge um, a couple months ago. This was before uh, the unfortunate COVID and coronavirus stuff going on there. Um, and I was able to get out and get a shot before everything was shut down. And um, again, it was kind of contrasty. It just had stopped raining. There were clouds. There were highlights bursting through. So very high dynamic scene that I couldn't get in a single photo. So I, I did a little HDR and still wasn't happy with it. And then I, I brought it into Luminar and I was just blown away by how I was able to relight it and what I was able to walk away with. Can, um, did you share so yeah, you brought up a perfect thing. Can yeah, we show the screen right away? Uh-huh. All right. So let's do this guy right here. So now won't you, yeah, let me know when, you're share, when your screen is shared. Um, should be shared now. One moment. Let me change the camera settings. Yep, shared screen here. Oh, I just had it. Camera shutting should be here. There we are. Got it. So Perfect. I, let, me, let me lock this screen in so now we can't switch it. Perfect. All right. You're good to go. Cool. Now. So this, this is what I wanted to show right away. Like this is a little bit of my process. Um, if you look over here, I'll just go through these photos. This is kind of what I was getting in a single in a single image. All right. You can see my I can change my settings up here on the top left so you can see what my camera settings were. I was shooting on the Fujifilm X-T3, which is a great sensor. Um, I was shooting on my 10 to 24, which is my wide angle landscape cityscape lens. And I just got this shot and this was auto camera settings and it was just a little dark. I got this one. It was a little bit light, but I could see the shadow detail. You know, I got this one and I could see all the detail in the highlights, but not any, no single one of them was what I was looking for. So what I did is a quick HDR merge and I got this. And now this was a little closer to what I could see when I was out there, but I still didn't have the same feeling. Like you, you're at the live concert and the sound feels different than when you're listening to a live album. And same thing, when you're taking the photo and you're immersed and you're seeing it in your eyes, it feels different than you, what you get in your camera a lot of the time. Well. I was able to really quickly go over to Luminar and do some stuff to relight it and, and pop some stuff out. And this is the image that came out of that whole process and was much more of what I was feeling and seeing there. The warmth of the light coming through and dappling on the bridge, the sun flare coming across as the clouds were parting, the highlights peaking in the clouds as the rain clouds were going away. Um, so I kind of want to just take this image next to it, which is just an HDR if I can get back to it. Oh, it froze up really quick. 
Yeah, what, what do you want? Your um Did uh did we lose you? Nope, I'm still we're still here. But still yeah, here? so Oh, hang on a second. I might need to <laughs> of, of course the computer freezes right in the middle of a live broadcast. Might need to reboot and hop back to you guys really quick. Okay. Yeah, we see you. You're you're fine. I'm fine. Yep, so it's your screen. Um how my screens stop, are locked. <laughs> yeah, try try stop sharing your screen. Uh-huh. And then um, we should Yeah, what are you in right now? You're in Lightroom? Yeah, I was just about to switch over. Okay. My Skype is locked out too. Yep. Okay, Maybe so how about I'll, yeah, I'll do a reboot. reboot if you can kick yep, me out. Calls right back. All right. Be right back, guys. Sorry about that. that. And while he's doing that, we'll come over here. And, and please do me a favor. Don't put in the comments, oh, look, Lightroom freezes. It's a fluke. You know, he. Um, that was him. Oh, actually, you know what? Let me. I'm so sorry. One moment. Let me come back over here. Oh, ready? Reconnect. Let's try it again. It's the first time I'm actually doing all this connection stuff live. So we'll see how talented I am. Or that's right, he's rebooting his machine. So I'm gonna pause it. We'll come back to him in a moment. All right, so what I'll do while he's doing that, let me open up another image. We'll share here. Okay, so here's another image. And what we're going to do is I want to relight the scene again. Now, looking at it, I never realized, uh, look down in here, I didn't realize there was people in the scene. So once again, let's come over to the fall colors or the autumn colors. Give it a moment. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Before and after. I mean, how amazing does that look? So um, I just, I mean, I just absolutely love, I absolutely, absolutely love the way that, that autumn colors looks. And, and the guys, again, I'm not a landscape photographer. I'm a portrait and sports photographer. Oh, one moment. Let's bring them in. All right, Eric, we got you here. Can you hear us okay? Yeah. All right, we're back. Yeah, Eric, Eric. I, I'm kidding. I shouldn't do that. Oh, my God. I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, what now? <laughs> I'm sorry. Aaron. All right, one, one moment. Let, let me make sure I have you set. All right, um, cool. So, <laughs> I know that was wrong. I just saw your screen skip it, and I was like, oh, good Lord. Yep. So, one second, Eric. Let, All right. So, here I have you here. Back. Um, All right. And then one moment. We have cool. to share your screen. Share that. Here we so, go. Make sure your screen is shared. All right, start sharing. Here we go. I got my red line. Perfect. We're okay, back. So, yep. So one. More. So let me get to your sharing of your screen. There it is. All right. So let me just finish up real quick with with, yep. with what I just said here. I love that actual image, but I love using those looks. And and since I'm not a landscape photographer, what I do a lot of times is I'll meet up with people like Eric, or I'll meet up with other friends of ours that that's their specialty. And then we'll go out and we'll photograph it. And then I come back and say, okay, well, what would you do to this image? And then I love to learn. Part of being a great educator or a great teacher is be a great student. To be a great leader, you have to be a great follower. And I mean, like if Eric and I get together since he's down visiting, he's about three hours away. I'd love to get with you, Eric, again, when we can do some collaborative shoots on um, uh, lifestyle shoots, right? Because that, that's your main specialty. But yep. you also love landscapes, right? Yeah. So, you know, and it's like this. If, if we were in a restaurant and, God forbid, one of us were choking, I mean, would, would you want, no offense to a taxi driver, would you want the <laughs> taxi driver to give you the high medical maneuver or uh, a chiropractor? Now, a chiropractor is still a doctor. You know what I mean? Yep. So, so, therefore, you know, I would rather have the chiropractor step in. As a photographer, yeah, we're not going to be perfect in everything we do. However, the skills that we have as a photographer will carry over into other things. All right, all right, are you ready? I'm switching. You're not going to believe this, but I think this N the NDI thing is what's locking up my computer. Um, so let me pull my hard drive. Oh, or actually, do this. Um, 
and I can I can I have a laptop right here I can try to plug into really quickly and share a screen from that. Okay. All right. So while you're doing that, um, let me see here so that, that they can see my screen. Perfect. And I'll just I'll just be able to dial you back in from this other you the laptop it. here really quick. All right. So anything <laughs> wrong that will. All right. So guys, so here we are. Again, I'm going to show how we use just a simple look, just the autumn look, to grab this incredible scene. Now, I do want to come up, and I'm looking close. Um, let's see the top section up in here. I do want to come in and apply the AI enhancer. Good, look at that. All right. Now, I could replace that sky, but honestly... I don't know, I, I kind of like it the way it is. I just like the way this is, is shaping him. I think one other thing I would like to do is drop a little vignette in. There we go. And maybe relight the midsection. There it is. All right, so before and after. All right, so hey, Eric, you know what we'll do is, are you still there with me? Yep, so here. So how about we do this, since we can't get your screen going, mm -hmm. let's just talk about the technical side of what you did. Yeah, absolutely. And All you right. know what, um, I have, I'm up and running on my other computer. So I oh. can, uh, I can, I'll end this call and I'll call oh. you back in like a fraction of a second. We can just go off the laptop and see if that works. All right, let's try that. Okay. All right, you hang up on this one, I'll be right back. You got it. All right, uh, <laughs> you know what's funny, knock on wood? Do you remember a few weeks ago I had this Biggest problem with an NDI. Um, an NDI is a free um, software that does stuff that we're trying to do. Let me pull in here. And uh, I had the, the hardest time with NDI. Then all of a sudden, I just did some tweaking and it works perfect now for me. All right, Eric, are you still there? Let me get. Um, so here we are on Skype. Um, and let me try this. End it. I'll do one more. We're almost there. There, I hung up on Eric there. And now I'm going to call him back. A couple more seconds. If not, we'll finish off with what we have here. And we'll bring Eric back on on another day to get all this stuff uh, situated. Yep, I'm going to do one more. Let's see if he's there. Um, Yep, that's fine. All right, guys. So, so what I'll do next time is I'll, sorry, I'll have Eric come back in, and we'll talk about the camera settings he used to get those types of shots. Now, uh, a couple from my own personal, um, what's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, wait a second. Here he comes. Oh, right, we got you, Eric? All right, you got me. Okay, horrible lighting. That's okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> Hey, well, now, now you get to see a little bit more of my lighting process from behind. Yeah, so let's see. I'm working with. One moment. Let's see if that'll work. Um, one second here. So that would be your new camera. Oh, there it is. I, yep, I got you. Okay. Got me? Yep. All right. So let, let's just do this. Um, there we go. Interesting. All right. So, okay, so, so let's talk about that shot you did. So how did you get the shot? So this I got handheld, actually. Um, let me see if I can share the screen here with you really quick. And if it locks up, don't worry about it. We'll just do. Gotcha. All right. So let's share a screen. Yeah, the, the camera's are much, much different, right? Yeah. Uh, here we go. Where's my share screen button on this smaller guy? Um, share screen, there we go. All right, one moment. Let me check. Um, All right. 
Yep, so one, oh, there we go. I think we got it. I see, oh, yeah, Perfect. so there we We're go. In? All, right. All right, cool. Let me turn this off. My lighting from the previously better lit shot was an ice light up front and an ice light behind me. Um, and they were great. And I had the, the Fujifilm X-T4 actually oh. uh, working as my webcam. Um, and this is the, the much different, not as nice photo out of my iMac <laughs> or a MacBook Pro rather. Um, okay, so here, here's what I got. Like here's the HDR image. And I actually shot three of these handheld rapid fire and merged them into an HDR, which is normally where we, we hope to be in landscape photography. And I used to think was the end. And then this is what the real end was because this has the feel of that moment and recreates more of what I remembered. Um, so let's take this HDR photo and bring it over and um, work it up to how it should feel. So there we go. And I'm going to break this in. And for me, the biggest thing for me is um, kind of what I call motivated lighting. Whether I'm lighting a person or I am lighting a landscape, which you don't really have a lot of control over on the real time, but in post-production when I'm lighting a landscape, um, I like to think of motivated lighting. And what that means is if I'm putting a softbox on one of my portrait subjects, I want that softbox to mimic a real light from like a street lamp or uh, the sun or light bouncing off a building. And that's the same approach I take to landscape photography. Because th the big thing about landscape photography is uh, being there when the light is right. Unfortunately, like you were saying earlier, I'm a people photographer by trade and a landscape photographer on vacation and as a hobbyist. And I don't always have the time to be there all day or multiple days in a row in the same spot looking for the right light. Um, so finding a, a post-production tool that allowed me to recreate the light um, is huge because it allows me to get better photos for my walls uh, without having to take twice as long as vacation days. So that's my motivation behind this. So going through here, um, I'm going to jump in a lot of the things that you already touched on. The artificial intelligence tools are incredible. So this is usually where I start. I just go into AI Enhance and I just start playing around and I'm looking at what it's doing. It's creating contrast. It's lightening up the foreground a little bit. To me, it seems like it's balancing out the lighting in the image where I have a bright sky and it's brightening up my foreground. Now in this particular image, I want a little bit of that to bring some detail to the foreground, but I'm not going to be heavy on it. What's focusing, what's big and important for me here is the bridge and the sky. So this is really cool how this AI sky enhancer tool has come about recently because I can grab that and it's focusing more on that, bringing the saturation up, bringing that contrast and really kind of popping my skies there in a way that I love. So that's just really a wonderful way to start. It's just uh, playing with those AI features right there. Structure you pointed out, this should be a really interesting image to try the AI structure on because if we were in Lightroom or a different piece of editing software, I would go through and I would grab the clarity slider. And what that clarity slider would do in an image like this with a lot of cables and all this detail would just make it look really crunchy. The local contrast would be too much. It would be awful. Um, but you come into this and the AI structure tool is intelligent. It's giving me more detail. And if you look in, it's enhancing the detail on the bridge here after that preview renders but without making all of these little lines in the scene, all these little cables overly crunchy and contrasty. So this AI structure is one of the smartest tools I've ever used in a post-production app because it allows me to get the detail and kind of the structure I want where I want it without applying it to stuff like this. Or if I had a person in this photograph, it wouldn't put the structure on the person's face because when you enhance structure on a person's face, it brings out the pores and the wrinkles and is really unflattering. So this AI structure is super intelligent. So these are the first big like global fixes I do. I come in here and I lean really heavy on the AI tools. Uh, from there, you go to the aptly named landscape enhancer. And here's where I start to talk about my motivated lighting. And Vanelli talked about this too, the feeling of when you're there. So when I was there, it was getting towards sunset. The clouds were breaking up. We were seeing the blue sky and I was getting these intermittent sunbeams and warm light from the sunset. And if you zoom in here, you can kind of see one of them I got in the corner there. See that really warm little pop of sunlight right there? So when I'm changing things in post-production, I want my changes to be motivated by what the existing light and feel was when I was there in the moment. So I'm going to go to my golden hour, and I'm just going to ride this way high up 
to pull out the warmth and enhance the warmth and the golden feeling that was happening when I was there. And what I love here is when I'm doing any kind of editing is the quick ability to toggle all my edits on and off. Two things, it shows me what I've done, but it also kind of keeps me honest too. It's like a check and balance. If I look at this and I was like, oh my God, I got a little too heavy handed, I'm going crazy here. It's a really easy way to, to give you a comparison to show you just how far you've gone. At the same time, you can use this tool up here on the top to split the screen and get a side by side showing on the right side the edits we've applied and on the left side that original raw photograph. Um, so I really love these preview tools up here. Now looking at this too, um, it looks like I've gone a little, little magenta heavy on this screen. So I like being able to go into color and remove color cast. And this is such a smart tool as well. Visually I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, hey, we warmed up the scene like I wanted it to be, but there's too much magenta. If I didn't even have the ability to identify that through years and years of staring at my computer screen for too long, I could just quickly go over here and remove color cast and it will most of the time identify that heavy kind of color cast that shouldn't be there and remove it for you right away. So it fixes up the coloring after I've added all that warmth and enhances it. And then I'm just gonna go to vibrance and just pop it just a little bit more. Nice. So again, my, my motivation with this was to take a photograph and through HDR, get as much dynamic range as possible in the shadows and the highlights. And then here in Luminar, I want to enhance it and get the feel that I'm looking for. So the HDR creation was the technical part. When I get in Luminar, it's all art, it's all feel. I, I want to create and tweak and finesse this to feel how it felt to be there taking the photo. So you can see how far we've come already. Uh, finally, this would be a great ending point for me a lot of the time. But what's really cool and I really love playing around with is this creative section of tools over here on the right hand side. So this right here could be a done image for me. I could hit apply, I could export this, put this on the web, put this on Facebook. My mom would love a copy of this photo, like it would be great. But if we wanna go a step further, like I said, when I get into Luminar, this is when I start to feel like an artist and less like a technical photographer. So I go in here in this creative tool palette and this gets fun. Uh, this right here, if you haven't played around with it, I suggest you do the augmented sky. This is really easy, kind of like sky replacement and sky enhancement. Definitely play around with that or go back to the YouTube channel and watch some of the great videos that Vanelli and everyone else have put up about this because these are two really powerful tools. Uh, but I can't, I don't want to touch on everything because this is really quick here. So I'm going to go in here and um, go into sun rays, which is one of my favorite, favorite things. So, so far we have relit the color of this photograph. Now we're actually gonna relight, literally add more light and direction of light into this photograph. And by do, to do that, I use the sun ray and I place the sun. So by placing the sun center, I can drag it around and as I turn up the effect, we'll start to see what it's doing. So I'm gonna turn the effect really high up. This is one way that I like to apply things. I like to overdo it so I can really see what it's doing in the photograph. And then I kind of, tone it back down to taste. So for me, I'm gonna turn this way up and I wanna show you something that's really cool. Like this isn't just a overlay. This isn't just a filter I'm slapping on top of it like in, in um, like Instagram or something like that or Hipstamatic. This is intelligent. Look as I bring this over, the sunbeams are <laughs> hiding behind the Brooklyn Bridge. Are you seeing this? Like they're just popping up and down. So this is intelligent. It's peeking out behind the bridge. It's peeking out being blocked by the bridge as if we're in a three-dimensional space here. It's so intelligent, it takes a 2D photo and it reads it as three-dimensional. So this is really neat if you have a light source or the sun in your photograph, you can enhance it further with sun rays. In this case, I'm just gonna bring it out to the side because I wanna add some cool sun flare versus the complete sun itself. So I'm gonna get into position over here, probably go around here, um, and then I'm gonna go over to my look. Now I would like this, it was bright and airy. We did all that work to see all of our shadow details. So I'm gonna take this look and I'm gonna crank it up so that it gets closer to the original look and brightness of the image as we saw it earlier. And then I'm just gonna kind of play around with what I think might be a natural placement for this light. Now keep it in mind, if I zoom in up here, place the sun there and I'll zoom in. You can see the light is moving from the right side of the picture to the left side of the picture. See the highlights and shadows on our structure there? So we wanna use that as kind of a cue or as a guide for where we wanna place our sun. So we wanna place our sun on the right side of the scene over here. 
I also want to create increase the length of those sun rays, all right, and the penetration. So I want to make sure they really shine through. Penetration is what controls that intelligent placement of the light. Like, you want more of it to shine around the structure, or do you want it to adhere and hide behind structures a little bit more? So penetration is where all that intelligence comes into play, and that's where you control that. I go to advanced settings here. I just want one big sun ray. So I'm going to turn down the number of sun rays here. I've got all my glow and my warmth controls here. And I'm just going to try to find a nice placement. I just want a little sun flare coming off the side here. So I think right like that should be good. And then now that I've got it in place, I've got the warmth of the sun rays how I want them to be. I've narrowed the ray down to just a big one. So you can see what it looks like if we add a couple more. I'm gonna close that down and then what I said, remember I start with big, so it's really easy to see what I'm playing with here and then I just dial it back down into taste. So I'm just dialing back down. So like a little bit of sun flare there in the corner. It's nice natural looking where the sun actually was. And then finally are those LUTs, those color styles. Again, I could end here and be totally happy with the photo. This is where it just gets really fun to play. So the last tool I'm gonna to show after we do this before and after here, this is where we started. An HDR is a nice place to start, but this warmth, feel, and glow and saturation is how the photo felt when I took it. So we're doing a good here. And then finally, I'm just gonna be like, hey, is there anything I'm missing? So have any of you ever been editing a photo and just like not really been inspired or not have an idea of what edit to do next? Like just overwhelmed by tools and options? That happens sometimes. So that's why I like to have my rule of motivated lighting because it kind of gives me a thought process for what I'm doing as far as edits. But if you've ever gotten stuck, or like me at this photo, I think it's good, but maybe there's something I'm missing. The color styles or these LUTs is a good place to go look for inspiration or to see if there's something that you may have may not have thought of. So these are all kinds of pre-programmed uh, edits, uh, different color curves and saturations and contrast that you can apply to things. And uh, aptly enough, Manhattan really worked for me as this photo <laughs> was taken in Manhattan. So I just happened to click on Manhattan as a LUT and I was like, what does that look like? And it was my favorite one. I'm not just saying that for the demo. This is when I edited this for my own personal Instagram that I found myself on Manhattan. And you just click here to toggle it on and off. And it just brings a little more warmth and light to the shadow area. It mats out the image a little bit. You know, and I can just crank it up. It also has a little more of like a pastel like kind of cross-processing element to it, which I don't want too much of. But I like how it kind of brightens up my shadows tweaks my colors a little bit and I'm gonna you know, lower the contrast there and a little saturation and I'm done. So there's the before and after of that LUT. It didn't do a lot, but you don't just always enough. need yeah. the tools to do heavy lifting. It just gives that touch. Exactly. Yeah, so, so, so it's funny. Let me just zoom back out and you yeah. can see the before and the after. Let's do the before and after again. I switched you over. Huh? Before, before, which we didn't think was a bad photo to begin with. And then after, look at how much more life and pop and vibrancy that has. Exactly. Now that feels like that sun flare is kind of hitting me across the side of the face and lighting the bridge, and you can really see the difference between the two. So with just a couple powerful tools, sun rays and color styles really added the extra level of drama. And then starting out leaning on my powerful AI enhanced tools and that wonderful landscape toolbar down there. I didn't even touch on foliage and dehaze like Vanelli was earlier. Those are amazing. I just used the golden hour because for me, it was a golden sunset and I wanted to bring that back to life in my photo. So with just a couple really powerful tools, you can knock out amazing images and relight them and relive them the way you actually experienced taking the photograph. Well, that's awesome. So Luminar is, is killing it right now. Awesome. Well, let's see, Eric. Let me get you back on the screen. Here we are. So I just had you. One moment. There we go. All right. All right. Um, yeah, before we go a little bit further, uh, yeah, Jose asked if we're going to use artificial intelligence as a plugin for other software such as Nuke. I'm not quite sure what Nuke is. Are you familiar mm -hmm. with Nuke? I haven't used Nuke before. No. Is that one of like the the 3D rendering? Yeah. I'm plugins, not quite or? sure. But I mean, the, but um, you know, it's funny because Dima. I mean, Luminar is so cheap, so it's so very inexpensive. And, yeah. and the whole reason behind it was they were sick of expensive software for themselves. So that's why yeah. they created this software and just kept building and building and building. And I mean, these are such incredible tools. Um, yeah, it's crazy you know, what they've added into this. Exactly. And Coast to Coast, thank you. Coast, Coast to Coast made a comment, did, did you guys forget to fix the thumbs up? Uh, people started hitting it to, to make sure it works. <laughs> and... 
Thank you. But yes, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Uh, we had something like 70 people watching live, so we should see those thumbs up there. But Eric, this was great. Um, let's go back for a moment. You're on the bridge, handheld. Yep. yep. Right? And you're shooting with what? The Fujifilm X-T3. Look what they sent so, me. So perfect. they just sent me the X-T, X-T3. Perfect. Yeah. I have the four. What do you have? Oh, my goodness. So I no, have I'm the kidding. three. I'm joking. Uh, I'm yeah, joking. As if I didn't have enough, like, gear acquisition <laughs> syndrome already. <laughs> I'm joking. I saw Kevin. I saw that Kevin was here. I saw my buddy Kevin was on, and we're all... We're all wondering whether the T four is coming. Um, so they said that. So I joked. Kevin is the joke. It's the uh, the T three. All you right. Have the three. Okay. So and they sent me several lenses. So I'm going to try it out. And again, it's. We talked about this earlier. Will mm -hmm. new camera gear make you a better photographer? And it's kind of a trick okay, question. No. The trick question is well, it will because you're going to go out and take more photos. <laughs> I mean, think oh, about that's such this. a great it, point. Right. It could be the cheapest. That little, my, my buddy bought a $200 lens, I forgot mm -hmm. the name of it, and it was a wide angle, and I was like, dude, that's a cheap, cheap lens. He puts it on, and the photos he shot, you know, technically, I mean, the photos were amazing, the quality yeah. was okay, but it was like, who cares? He was out shooting more. Um, yeah. And so, I, so I'm so thankful that they sent me these to try out, and over the next few weeks, uh, I'm going to be kicking it. And Actually, I should take a trip down to come, come visit. visit you. Come over this way, yeah. yeah, yeah just whole... open up our beaches so we can go out there and take some, some sunsets. Yep, yeah, and just so everyone knows, here in Florida, we're in stage one. So they've opened yeah, up. Yeah, we're in stage one of our opening. We're social distancing. I'm in an office by myself right now. You can tell by the filing cabinet behind me, so I'm not wearing a mask. But, uh, yeah, yeah, but we're still, we're still allowed to go out. Our, our restaurants are open, so mm -hmm. we're just being cautious. But anyways, but yes, I'll, I'll check that out with you. Um. And again, it, it's the technical side. So there you are on that bridge, handheld. Yeah. Well, and, I, and I wanted to mention your... something about that because your question about like, will will new gear make you a better photographer? It's um, I have one rule. Like I'm I'm a commercial photographer. I make my living as a photographer, and it's hard to be a gear nut and a photographer at the same time because you know you're like okay I have to keep my business afloat, but yet I want all the cool toys. Um, so I have one rule when it comes to looking at new camera equipment. Will this piece of equipment allow me to do something I was previously unable to do? Boom, perfect. Will a slightly faster lens do it? Nope. A slightly more powerful light? Nope. But if I get a new camera or lens that has image stabilization in it so that I can go to the Brooklyn Bridge and handhold multiple HDR you know, bracketed photos without putting down a tripod, without needing to get a permit, without tripping people up, um, then it allows me to take shots I couldn't previously do. So that might be something that I consider to put in my budget for the next year um, for an investment in new equipment. And that's kind of how I got away with this. This shot was taken with uh, the 10 to 24 Fujifilm, the 10 to 24 millimeter Fujifilm lens. And that lens has image stabilization in it. But if you look here closely at the corners, so let me just zoom in on the corners here. Go to like 100% and scroll up. You'll see this, see this white gap right here? That's when I merge the photo to an HDR photo, the photos weren't perfectly aligned because I was only using a camera with image stabilization in the lens. Gotcha. So there was a little overlap and I had to crop. I actually had to crop into this photo because my three HDR bracket didn't, didn't perfectly align. Now, if I had had the X-T4, Fujifilm's newest camera with in-body stabilization and the lens stabilization, I probably could have handheld this shot and gotten no overlap and not had to crop it at all. But going back, the X-T2, if I had you know one of these cameras and I didn't have a lens with stabilization at all, I couldn't take this photo at all. I'd have to bring a tripod. So it's, it is one of those things. If, if you can get a shot with a new equipment that you couldn't previously get, then it's worth considering as an investment. Otherwise, it's just fancy new gear if you're a commercial photographer. You oh, know, you, where I have to justify you, you, you it. You hit the nail right on the head. Um, you know, again, will it save me time and money to do this? If the answer is yes, you do it. If the answer is no, you don't do it. Plus, let's not forget, Eric, you and I are both single, so you don't have sure. we don't have a spouse that we have to <laughs> that we have to go to. So we have to practice more of our self control when we yeah. see something really cool that we want to get. Whereas, if you have a significant other, they kind of keep you in check. What, what was that old joke? 
How does a, how does a photographer have a million dollars? You give them oh, two. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, mm -hmm. real quick, um, my buddy Kit made a comment. Where do you guys store your your Lutz folders when you download from the web? Let me show Ooh, my screen real quick. Uh, what I do is in my photography folder, where I have all my images here. Um, I do have one called underscore assets, and in my assets folder, that's where I put my skies, textures, LUTs, and then image, free image overlays. So I hope that helps you um, understand um, where, how I do that. So, all right. So, hey, Eric, or we get back to you and us. There we go. Eric, thank you so much. It was great having you on. Uh, yeah. Our, our coffee breaks are supposed to be 15 to 20 minutes. Oh shoot! We're, this okay, we're going on like. I'm so 40, sorry, guys. No, we're doing forty. It's funny because I, the first time I did it, I went forty-five minutes, and Rich Harrington said, "Manelli, how long is a coffee break?" I don't know, an hour. He goes, "You've never worked in a corporate environment, but <laughs> coffee breaks are not an hour. That's lunch." I said, yeah. "I don't know, thirty minutes." Again, no, fifteen to twenty minutes is a coffee break. Oh, okay. But well, guys this, like us can just keep talking. So our coffee breaks. It take us forever to drink a cup of coffee. There you go. Yeah. So, but hey, thank you so much for having for coming on. And like I said, um, sometime in the next uh, a week or two, I wouldn't mind coming down with you with the Fuji, yeah. and then give you a crash course because it, it's old school. Holy crap! Um, it's amazing. I'm it quick. What I mean by old school, I I went to set the, I went to change the aperture, uh -huh. and I was like, what the oh? They it have clicks. the old school rings. The aperture yeah. ring so, actually clicks. How good does that feel? Yeah, I was like. Oh my God, look at that. So, um, and the bodies feel, I do need the battery grip just because yeah. I have the Shrek hands. You know, my, hand, yeah. Yeah, my hands are a little too big for that. But yeah, it was old school. Right, right, right when I saw that, I thought that was, uh, that was interesting. Um, <laughs> thank you, Kevin. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that you could switch um, your F-stop, your, your, your aperture is switched like the old fashioned on the actual lens itself. Now you could turn it to auto, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's, yeah, there's hey. an auto for everything, which yeah. is, then it just looks like a cool trendy camera, like a point and shoot, but you can also go full manual, click feedback. Yeah. I love it because if I'm looking through the viewfinder, I don't want to be looking around the outskirts of the electronic display for readings. I want to be able to click, 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 like tactile feel. Sweet. And really so I'm, I'm definitely going to pick your brain and have you give me a crash course on that. Yeah, oh, I right. love the Fujifilm stuff. I'd love to talk about it and go shoot some sunsets or some birds or something. You got it. All right, my man. Hey, thanks so much, and I really appreciate it. Thank and you for everyone having else, me. Hey, you have a great – remember, it's Mother's Day weekend, so make sure you do – for your mothers, uh, your spouses, if they're, if, they're, if they're a mother, make sure we celebrate that properly with them. Give them big – well, we can't give them hugs right now because of the, the six-foot rule, but – Make Send sure them a pretty special photo. weekend for them. So thanks so much, everyone, for joining us.